Well, the market made a huge comeback in February. Should you be buying in? That and your questions on Canadian banks and exchange traded funds in this week's TrendX report. Hi and welcome to the Trendex report for the week of March 7th to 11th. I hope you've been doing well. It's been a while since we've seen each other. Now the market took this big scary drop in early January and it was followed by this dramatic huge recovery in February and into early March. So you might be wondering, you know, should we be buying into this market? Is the worst over? So in this report, I want to give you a sense of where I see the market headed and why and the strategy that you should be taking. Here's a daily chart of the S&P 500 over the last few months. The blue bars along the bottom is the 25 over 50 day moving average. That's a medium term average. And you can see that the 25 over 50 day just crossed up here on Thursday, Friday. You can see that we had this big drop into early February, uh, followed by an equal recovery that's taking us almost up to uh, the December highs. Now, when we look at the S&P 500 on a weekly basis, we see a couple of interesting things. One is that the long-term average, the 12 over 25 week moving average is down. It initially crossed down in August, briefly popped up in November, early December, and went down again. Now, the red line along the bottom is average true range. That measures volatility. And the average true range has been going up quite a bit uh, through the late part of 2015, and that trend continues. Market's still very volatile, down and up. Now we can also see the market has made some new six month lows. Those are the red arrows in early 2016. To me, that tells me that the general trend of the market is still down. You can see that we are still making a series of lower lows and lower highs, which tells me that the US market is still in a general downtrend. Now we can also look at the advanced decline line, which is the number of stocks advancing or declining versus the overall market. And back in the middle of 2015, from about March to July, we had the general market going sideways while the advanced decline was turning down. That's what we call a divergence. We have one thing showing us a negative market. We have the other that has not yet shown us that. Obviously, we had the big flash crash in August, uh, followed by some weaker recoveries. And so at this point, advanced decline line is very strong, just like the market. But just like the market, the overall trend in the AD line is down. Now turning to Canada, the 25 over 50 day moving average crossed up about a week ago. And you can see that from uh, the middle of January, that kind of that spike low right there, uh, we are making a series of higher highs. Uh, and in fact, the market has been quite good. It's taken out that December high. And over the last couple of months, the Toronto market is definitely a lot stronger than the US market. However, when we look at the long-term trend, part of that reason is that the Canadian market has just gone down a whole lot more and is making a little bit of a recovery. The 12 over 25 week moving average is still down. Volatility, the average true range remains still very elevated. And we did make uh, some new six month lows here in January that kind of coincided with probably the bottom for now in oil. Uh, but the general long-term trend for the Canadian market is still firmly down. Now, gold is looking kind of interesting. Gold's on a bit of a tear right now. And uh, we have had this big pop uh, from, you know, kind of mid to late December. Gold has been up 20% or so in the last couple of months. Uh, now, ideally, and uh, I'll answer a viewer question on this next time, uh, ideally, I'd like to see gold come off to about 110 or 115, uh, 110 ideally, and then head up from there before I'm interested in buying. But the 12 over 25 week moving average is up on gold, a symbol is GLD, and gold is looking pretty good. Now, when we look at the trend X, this is the number of stocks turning up and turning down 
on a 12 over 25 week basis. So you can see that back in, uh, what is that, uh, early January, the number of stocks turning down was a lot higher than the number of stocks turning up. Since then, we've had a bit of a reversal, uh, and on a long-term basis, the market is kind of where it was back in October, November, so definitely a better market recently, uh, but generally for the last 12 months, the number of stocks turning down is greater than the number of stocks turning up, but at the moment, the long-term trend is up for the Trendex. Now, when we look at the medium term, uh, the medium term trend X has been extremely strong since the middle of February. Um, on a medium term basis, we have the strongest market measured in the last year and a half. Uh, very strong market. Uh, we started to see a bit of a turn down here um, a couple days ago and had this dramatic recovery. On a medium term basis, the market is as strong as it was weak back in August. Now the short term trend X can give us a sense of where the market is at this moment. And at this moment, short term momentum has really kind of stalled out. Um, we can see that about a week ago, uh, we had about 300 stocks that were turning up on a short term basis. Very strong uh, short term trend, as strong as it was back in October. Uh, or almost anyways, and we've had a big reversal. So that tells me that the short-term trend X has really turned down, and we are definitely gonna see a pause uh, in this upward momentum. Now, when we look at new highs and new lows, new highs are still very, very low. Last week, we had about 150 stocks make new highs. Compare that with a year ago when we had about maybe five or 600 stocks making new highs. And even at that time, that signaled a very weak market uh, over the coming year. So with 150 stocks making new highs, chances are you're not really going to see stocks make new highs over the next little while. So in terms of our basic conditions, uh, the February-March recovery has not taken us to new highs, which is a very good confirmation. It has not happened. The overall market is still either sideways or down. If you're an investor, if you're a long-term holder of the market, you want to start using this recovery to get out of the market. You can start exiting your long-term positions once the recovery is over. That recovery may be over now. It may be over in the next few weeks. And you want to be using that to lighten up on your equity positions. Now, if you're a trader like me, you want to start selling the market short once this market starts to turn down. Not at this moment, but once the market starts to lose that upward momentum and start heading down, that's where you want to enter your short positions. This week I got some really great viewer questions. The first one comes from Fran who says, I try to invest in ETF funds because I don't want to be in the market weekly or trying to pick stocks. Picking stocks is just too nerve wracking for me. No problem. Um, how do I keep up with the sectors other than the daily news? Fran, you don't want to watch the daily news. Uh, one of the reasons why I do a Trendex report every week or two, normally, is that it's much better to look at the market on a longer term basis once in a while than looking at the market every day. It's actually better to look at the market once a week or once every two weeks than to look at the market 14 times every two weeks. You don't want to look at the market every day. I look at the market in the evenings for a couple of minutes, uh, maybe 10 or 15 minutes. I actually don't look at the market during the day. And I run a business helping people uh, trade the stock market and I do it in my spare time. So um, one thing that you can use to keep track of ETFs or sectors is Google Finance. I'll talk about that right away. Um, and check them on Saturday, friend. Don't look at the market during the week. Don't worry about the news. Look at these sectors, these ETFs on Saturday after the week is done. And use a weekly chart. Uh, and you can use that 12 over 25 week moving average to keep track. So if you're gonna use Google Finance, which I definitely recommend, when you go onto Google Finance, on the left-hand side, you're gonna see something called portfolios. When you click that on, 
on the right hand side uh, will be create a new portfolio and that's where you're going to go to create that portfolio and have that list of uh, ETFs of sectors that you can track. Here's a list of 10 that you can get started with. They cover a lot of parts of the market, give you a good broad sense of things. Um, some of them trade on Toronto, some of them trade on New York. Uh, you can definitely track the, uh, the TSX 60, which I do for the Trendex report. Uh, that's the XIU. You can track the S&P 500, symbol is SPY. NASDAQ is QQQ. You can track Canadian bonds, US bonds, maybe healthcare, maybe industrials, maybe you wanna track emerging markets or gold or consumer staples, pick some stuff. Fran, if you want help setting up that moving average to see whether these sectors are trending up or trending down, check out my three-part series. It's free. Uh, you can click on this link and you can sign up for it. Uh, you'll also see it in my channel art on my YouTube page, uh, the, the uh, three-part series. Check it out. I show you how to set up that moving average on Google Finance. And once you have those uh, ETFs on your portfolio, just take a peek on uh, a Saturday at them. The next question comes from E. Dempster who says, is now a good time to buy Canadian bank stocks? And if so, are there any to avoid? Thanks. Well, this is XFN. XFN trades on Toronto. It's an exchange traded fund that tracks Canadian financials. Now it's not just banks, but banks make up a very big part of XFN. You can see that the 12 over 25 week moving average is down on XFN. Um, the ETF is making a series of lower lows and lower highs. Volatility is elevated. This market is about twice as volatile as it was a year ago. Volatility, as you know, is generally a topping process. It's a sign of trouble. I definitely look at volatility either trending up or down. Now, when we look at a specific stock, let's say Royal Bank, uh, symbol is RY, we can see that the 12 over 25 week moving average crossed down in early 2015, about a year ago. We had a little bit of a recovery in uh, April, May, since then, uh, Royal Bank is clearly heading down. It made some new six month lows here in January. We've had a little bit of a recovery this last few weeks, but I would not be a buyer of uh, a stock like this one. So I would definitely steer clear of all Canadian banks. There aren't any Canadian banks I like or that I would be buying right now. Most of them, maybe even all of them, are in a long-term downtrend and they're making new lows. You want to stay away. So thanks for the great questions this week, guys. Keep them coming. Uh, make sure you click on the link to sign up for uh, the weekly Trendex report and I'll let you know when a new one comes out. Don't be afraid to uh, ask a question. You can click on the button here and uh, submit your question for the report. I get a lot of questions. Uh, I definitely will um, answer them. I do keep track. So if you send a question and it's not answered in this week's report, I do have them listed and I will eventually get to all of them. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Fran, if you need help setting up that 12 over 25 week moving average, check out my three well, the market made a huge comeback in February. That...